Here's how to retrieve a JPEG image from the internet and display it on an OLED or TFT display attached to a microcontroller. This code will potentially work with any microcontroller. However, due to the large amount of memory requirements, it's not recommend you attempt this on an Arduino, Uno or Mega. It's also generally better to use JPEG files for which you already know the dimensions and the rough file size. The best way I've found to achieve this is to use the Bodmer TJPEG decoder library. It will work on the ESP32, ESP32CAM and ESP8266. Downloaded images are stored in the device's SPIFS file system, so an external SD card is not required. So this is the library's GitHub repository and there's a link in the description. You don't need to install it from here, but if you scroll down there is a readme and that's worth a look. This does explain why it won't work on specific devices. Also there are limitations as to which JPEGs it will support. So JPEGs must be in 24-bit format. That's normally most of them these days. JPEG files in the progressive format aren't supported, but there's not so many of those around these days. So the library itself you can install through the Arduino IDE. And to do this, you go to Tools, Manage Libraries, and then if you search for TJPEG, and here it is. So TJPEG underscore decoder is the one. So you need to install this. You also need the graphics library. This is TFT underscore ESPI. That's the one also by Bodmer. So you need this to be able to display the images on the screen. You can get the images to be rendered using a different graphics library, but that's a somewhat advanced task. So we will use this one for now. Once the libraries are installed, you can go to File, Examples, and scroll down and look for the example. So the example we want is tjpeg underscore decoder, then spiffs, and then this spiffs underscore web underscore jpeg. Later, once you've got this one working, you can potentially use the other ones, including the SD card one, if you want. But for now, we'll use this one here. So this is the example. Before you compile it, you need to check that you have the right board version. So you need to go to Tools, Board, and then Boards Manager, and look for ESP32. So the ESP32 by Expressive Systems, if you're using that one, you have to ensure that you have version 2. So if you get compilation errors and you're using an ESP32, then this could be the reason why. After that, there's not too much to do. You need to change these lines here. So on your Wi-Fi network, you need to put your SSID in here and your password in here. Then if you scroll down the actual image URL, is here. So when you come to testing it, you can just test with this image or you can put in your own image. Note it does have to be on the internet though. So when you're ready to upload the sketch to your device, I recommend you go to sketch and then verify compile. This will check that you have all of the libraries and everything. I should also mention that I got an error the first time when I actually uploaded it to my device. The code did actually work though and it did successfully download the image. If you get spiffs errors then it's worth going to tools and then partition scheme and you need to make sure that you have something here for spiffs. So spiffs is a kind of file system used in memory so you have to make sure there's enough room for the JPEG. I've gone with the default here. So note that if you were doing something else with your ESP32, you might not have any SPIFS memory available. So now I'll connect the ESP32 to my PC and upload the sketch. And there it is, so it has worked successfully. So if you don't want the image full screen, you can set this scale option here. So 4 will make it much smaller, so let's try that one. So that is much smaller. I'll also mention that if you monitor the serial monitor, you can get quite detailed feedback about what it's actually done. So this is quite useful. It says it's starting to retrieve the file and that's successfully retrieved. So another possible problem you might have is that you put the URL in wrong. You can also change the file name if you need to. 
Downloading multiple images would be pretty straightforward as well. So I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.